Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Lamé coefficients and orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. If we're given orthogonal surfaces w1 equals f of x, y, and z, w2 equals g of x, y, and z, and w3 equals h of x, y, and z, so the surfaces will be C1, C2, and C3. If these surfaces for all values of C1, C2, and C3 are orthogonal to each other, then what we're going to do is we're going to consider the vector field of position, consider the vector field R, which is just x i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat. If these surfaces are orthogonal surfaces, we know that the dot products of the gradients are going to be zero. And what that allows us to do is that allows us to write the vector field position R, which is x i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat, as some other function, let's call it a, a of w1, w2, w3 i hat plus b of w1, w2, w3 j hat plus c of w1, w2, w3, k hat. So the vector field position looks like this. And now if I look at those corresponding coordinate curves, right? So if I consider, for example, if we look at r as a function of, uh, if we look at this curve r of w1, which corresponds to a of w1, c2, c3, i hat plus b of w1, c2, c3, j hat plus c of w1, c2, c3, k hat. This will correspond to a curve, right? This is a curve. And I can similarly consider, we can similarly consider, similarly consider r of w2 and r of w3 with the corresponding modification. So r of w2, I'm just going to replace the uh, the W1 and the W3 with a C1 and a C3, and for the R of W3, I'm going to replace the W1 and W2 with a C1 and C2, right? Then these curves are all or orthogonal curves, right? So the curves R of W1, R of W2, and R of W3 are perpendicular, are mutually perpendicular curves. And therefore, what I can do is I can do the following. I can find their tangent vectors. What are their tangent vectors? They're these curves. The tangent vectors are going to be what? Are going to be, well, what will they be? They'll really just be this function over here. They'll just really just be partial derivatives, right? Because those things, those other variables are constants. The tangent vectors will be partial r, partial w1, partial r, partial w2, and partial r, partial w3. And they may not be unit vectors, may not be unit vectors in principle. But what we're going to do now is we're going to say, we're going to define the Lamé coefficients. So what are the Lamé coefficients? The Lamé coefficients are just the norms of these things, the Lamé coefficients. So our Lamé coefficients are going to be what? Are going to be lambda 1, which is going to be just the modulus or the length of this vector, partial r, partial w1. Lambda 2 is going to be partial r, partial w2. And lambda 3 is going to be partial r, partial w3. And those, these are the Lamé coefficients. So in further videos, we're going to see how these Lamé coefficients can be used to, com to simplify the calculations with differential operators. So for example, in spherical coordinates, we can check out what these things that would be in spherical coordinates or polar coordinates in any sort of coordinate system. So for example, let's do a simple example in cylindrical coordinates. In cylindrical, x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta, and z is just equal to itself z. And so what will our vector field position look like? It's going to be r cosine theta i hat. So if I did the derivative with respect to r1, what would we see? So the lambda 1 over here would be what? The derivative with respect to r. So our vector field would be what? Our vector field, our vector field position is going to be what? It's going to be r cosine theta, r sine theta, and then what? And then finally, we're just going to have a um, factor of z, right? And so the r derivative of this partial of the r vector with respect to r is just going to be cosine theta sine theta 0. And so that's going to tell me that the lambda 1 is going to be just a um, cosine squared plus sine squared. So that's going to be a 1. 
the lambda 2 is going to be a theta derivative, and so we can easily check that the lambda 2 over here, the lambda 2 is just going to be r. And finally, the lambda 3 is just going to be the derivative with respect to z, and that's just going to give me a 1 as well. So I'm just going to have lambda 3 is equal to 1. So those are the Lemay coefficients in cylindrical coordinates. We can do, we'll see further examples in spherical coordinates, prolate, parabolic coordinates, all sorts of other curvilinear coordinate systems, how we compute these Lemay coefficients. Thank you very much.